Hello there. Hello there. My name is Xander Tabler, and I'm the Community Engagement Specialist for Fantasy Flight Games. Community, community Engagement Specialist. Yes. I'll have to, because when I start, I'm going to say it again. I got to get it right. Yeah, no All right. Community Engagement Specialist. Yeah, do we want to write it down? Does no, that, I've got it. You got I'm, it. I'm cool. a professional. All yeah, right. No kidding. Hey guys, I'm Doe here from Ice Cave Radio here with Xander Tabler, the community manager specialist for Star Wars Unlimited, the trading card game. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing wonderful. So excited to be here. Uh, Join in a chat a little bit with you about uh, what I do and more specifically Star Wars Unlimited. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like uh, we, you know, on these shows, we talk to the designers a lot yeah. and, and, all, and the people who are making the game, which is understandable, right? But there's obviously people on the team that are very engaged with the community. And well, that's actually in your title. I yeah, it is. <laughs> but also a big part of it, too. So yeah. I wanted to actually talk to you and, and learn a little bit about your role and, and uh, your involvement with the game and all that. So, uh, but before we do that, uh, you're a self-described uh, lover of too many card games, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, and and I, I would put myself in that same category too. We just love card games in general. But for you, uh, what is it about card games in particular that appeals over you know all other types of games? Essentially, that's a good question. So, I think for me specifically, I really like card games. I guess for two reasons. But one of them, the the bigger reason is. I like having games where I can engage with it without having to sit down and play. Mm. Uh, and I think, you know, there's other games like board games and stuff you can think through strategies and like, oh, maybe that would work in things. But a big part of your, like the game of a trading card game is building your deck beforehand, yeah. making those little adjustments, figuring out what you need to bring that day. It's, it's the meta gaming and that whole thing. And it becomes a piece of, it, you are playing the game without actually playing the game. Mm. Uh, and I really enjoy that. It gives me something to do and uh, think about constantly with it and so i'm like oh this is great to like always be thinking about this hobby that i really love and that is not only just like oh i'm thinking about it wishing i was playing it's oh i this is part of that process that's a good point you can really engage with it without being actually playing at the time yes it's really cool and i love uh in the game specifically for trading card games i really enjoy that you learn this base set of rules and you're Mm -hmm. hanging out and you're like cool all of our friends are doing this and then every three to four months the whole game changes you know the base rules still but what works, what doesn't work, what maybe has advantages, like completely changes and the, the cards that you're messing with and throwing in your deck might completely flip and who you're running if you're playing Star Wars Unlimited or yeah. another game with like a leader is like, oh, I don't like this anymore. This does not work in what's happening now. And so you have to completely change your game plan. Uh, so it's always evolving. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, always evolving definitely describes Unlimited right now in set one. I mean, like I... I've been telling people this as an aside, that this is the best set one of any card game I've ever seen because I've never wow. seen the diversity of deck styles and archetypes and what's strong at a tournament change so much week to week in set one of a card game. It, it really is something else. But that's that's besides the point. I oh, know yeah. you like to get out and compete too, speaking of being out there in the meta. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how often do you get to, to get out these days? Uh, I always say, like, not as much as I'd like. If I could go every night of the week, I would. Uh, unfortunately, I have other <laughs> obligations and things. Mm. But I try to get out and play at least uh, once in public uh, or at, like, a game store somewhere uh, a week is is usually my goal. Do you get uh, recognized when you, when you go out? Every single time. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, you're the, the guy from the live streams. I'm like, yeah, I am the guy from the live streams. It's great to meet you. And it's, it's really fun because... I think that also opens up. It's it's nice being one of the like faces that people recognize is like, oh, cool. If you're new there, you'll recognize and like maybe you want to chat with me or if you're a veteran, you want to chat about games. And it's also mm-hmm. fun like for me to break the ice. Uh, yeah. Like I immediately feel welcomed in a lot of the communities, which is really cool. And it's, it's always great to just chat people like, what decks are you running? What what are you seeing in previews? What are you like last tournament? How well did you do? Things like mm-hmm. that. And I just love having those conversations. That's like half the reason I go to the game stores to play. I was like, oh, I can play at home, but I'd rather go and like find out what people are doing and what they're thinking and just engage with the, the community as a whole. Yeah, that makes sense. So we, we know you a lot from the live streams, right? Yeah. You're the guy kind of running the show on all the live streams and all that. What's, what's, your, what's been your favorite moment from one of those streams so far? Oh, man. Uh, 
I've had some really fun times on live streams. I think the most memorable ones, uh, one was uh, Josh handing over like the reins of the live streams to me, crowning yeah. me for the stream. That was very <laughs> memorable. Uh, and I was super excited to you know be taking over and uh, getting to do this weekly. Uh, and so I would say the one for gameplay though, and I'm gonna feel so bad for John, Ryan, and Joe for saying it, is when I absolutely smoked them in <laughs> Twin Suns uh, with my Han Cassian deck. And that was like, Man, I actually do know what I'm doing when I'm playing these games sometimes. That's cool. Uh, and so, yeah, if you haven't watched that one, it was our first time playing Twin Suns as, like, that was the whole stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, go check it out. It was awesome. Big fan of it. <laughs> All right, there you go. Yeah, yeah. got to kind of show the developers who's boss sometimes. Yeah, you know? honestly, yeah. it you know, I good friends with all of them, and it's just great getting to beat good friends in a very public setting. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so I want to talk about the community, the community engagement specialist role a little mm -hmm. bit. Did I get it right? Yeah. That's a, wow, that's a tongue twister. It, it really okay, is. Okay, all right, we're, we're working on it. Um, so... How did you end up in this role for uh, Star Wars Unlimited? Because if I recall correctly, this is the first game for Fantasy Flight that has had this role. Um, so uh, how did you end up getting this thing? Because they haven't done it before. Yeah, uh, so I joined uh, the FFG uh, team about two and a half years ago now. Okay. Uh, jumped in as an organized play and marketing coordinator, kind of doing a little bit of everything, basically whatever was asked of me type job of like, hey, we got to do all these different things. We had a very small team at the point. Um, but I'd always been playing trading card games and things like that. And so before Unlimited came out, we there was a lot of discussions about, okay, we got to build this team out in a way that can best support a game that we have not done in forever. So what are those roles that we've never had that are needed to support something like this and really go all in on like a trading card game experience and make sure people are having a great time and we we can get all the the steps and boxes checked as we go. Mm. Uh, and one of those things that came up was, oh, we want somebody in a like a community manager or community engagement role in order to make sure that we're uh, living up to our, one of our like kind of almost like a motto type deal, but like is like we wanted to be transparent from the beginning uh, yeah. because we knew building back trust around Fantasy Flight games as a whole was gonna be something big that we needed to work on. And mm -hmm. so having someone in a role to be constantly listening and engaging and chatting uh, was like one of the things they wanted. And so I, they talked to me a little bit beforehand and they're like, oh, we're gonna do this thing. Is it something you might be interested in? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I would, I would love to do that. That sounds great to me. Uh, and so they posted the role and I interviewed and got the position and it was great. Uh, and so I started that, I think I jumped in the position like right as this game was uh, first announced. It was like okay, right. like that month I had just gotten hired into this one. So I changed positions and uh, the rest is history there and I've been doing it since then. Cool. All right. So uh, a, a lot of other uh, places they call this role like the community manager. That's kind of the colloquial term a lot of people know it for. for sure. um, and that, But that role... Uh, whatever you want to call it, has had a very broad scope across the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you feel should be the, the duties specifically of that role? And uh, how, how close do you feel like your day-to-day -day here meets that? Oh, I, day-to-day, -day, I, so I have, I would say, a lot more roles than I mean a, a typical community manager or that style role. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of our social media work too, so it's not just like, uh, working with creators of the community as a whole. It's also planning out marketing plans and things like that with the rest of our team. Uh, and so my day-to-day, -day, it definitely varies of like how much is like specifically just the community engagement part mm. portion of it. Uh, but I think the important parts of it is like spending time each week um, listening to what the community is saying in uh, forums or discords or like community groups, getting engaging in person as well at events and things like that uh, mm. is, is definitely a big one of that's the big part of it. You want you want to know what people are saying, what they're thinking, what their ideas are for what they want to see in the future is, is something that it, I definitely think of myself as almost a li liaison between those who are playing the game and those who are making the game yeah. on our side. And I want to always be that voice for both sides back and forth of like, okay, here's, here's what we're hearing. What can we do to make this the experience that the community wants? And then from yeah. our side, it's like, what do the devs want to talk about or the producers or any other member of leadership? Like, what is the message that we want to get across to the community and how do we do that in a fun and engaging way? And so a lot of my, uh, I think those are like the important part is knowing how to strike that balance of look, okay, how, what what can we actually get done? What's what's the dream and what's the actual things that we can put into place now to build towards what we were, we're working towards? I mean, that kind of that goes perfectly into my next question because as, as someone in this role, you sort of have to strike that balance between sort of uh, 
PR-esque sort of vibe for the company side, but then also being a very genuine member of the community because you're out there, you're playing, you are part of that community. So how do you how do you kind of strike that balance then? Uh, I think it's really important uh, to be authentic mm -hmm. across the board. I think that's one thing that I, I strive to be is like, you're not just seeing like this performance of, ah, Xander goes to the game store because he needs to do research or he's got to like make an appearance or something, all that jazz. It's like, no, I'm doing this because I genuinely love this game. Mm -hmm. and I love the community around it. And I want to be a part of it. Uh, but it, there is absolutely that balance of like, okay, here's the things that I know on the on the internal side. Uh, I mean, it's making sure that I am keeping things honest and as honest as I possibly can right. going forward and authentic about this is how we feel about it and this is what we're working towards and building that trust and relationship with both of them. And so I think it's uh, both the community and the the company and making sure that it's not just me as the touch point is like mm. the big thing is uh, like I don't want to be the only person that you know at Fantasy Flight Games because like ah he's the community guy cool we're the community great like I, uh, I think it's important that you know a lot of the other people on the team and so helping them feel more comfortable in some of that position is uh, definitely a piece of the puzzle there is like Mm -hmm. Some of our devs are maybe not as, uh, you know, people persons are like wanting to go as extra devs often are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them, like Tyler, I will specifically call out, <laughs> are uh, absolutely in that boat and want to. And it's making sure that we're all on the same page of how we are approaching uh, what we do. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it, it must be difficult sometimes, too, because you see a decision that's made internally where it's like, okay, this totally makes sense. I get why they're doing mm -hmm. it. But that reason can't be shared with the community yet, and there's there's uh, there's a little bit of strife because of that kind of thing. Like that's yeah. that's a tough situation to to deal with sometimes. For sure, it's it's definitely a thing where uh, I try to know as much as I possibly can internally, so that way I'm not setting up any dominoes that are going to fall in the wrong yeah. way later. Of like, oh, I said something because I, that's what I truly thought and mm. thought the direction was, and so I try to make sure that I'm well aware of things and not speaking towards things that could eventually, you know. Mm turn in a different direction. But I, I, I think the biggest thing is that I always go in with like the best intentions of, okay, we will do what we everything we possibly can to make this the experience that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe in the, down the road, you'll see the bigger picture and it may not be the most fun at this exact moment, but I hope that like you give us a chance and have a little faith in us that, hey, like maybe there's something more to this thing that we're saying or doing at this exact moment. Having been in that situation many times in the, over the years in esports, I sympathize for sure. So, for sure, yeah. So what's, uh, what's, your, what's your end goal for this role? What's, uh, what's the, if you could say, this is what I want to accomplish as this someday when, when the time oh. ends, you know, what's, uh, what, what is that? A fine, I, oh, I, 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 the problem is I always set these goals each year and as like we go through, we're like, this is what we want to reach. Mm -hmm. And it's it's always constantly evolving of like, part of my goals should all, or I always try to make them, okay, what does the community actually want? And it's not mm -hmm. just me saying, okay, pen to paper, we need to have performance reviews, like time, here's the three goals that I have for the year type deal. It's, yeah. it's, it's much more dynamic and I want to uh, continue evolving with the community. But I'd say the big things I want to do is keep uh, creating uh, a community with content creators and other touch points that are leading their own smaller microcosms of the Star Wars limited community as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I would love to be working with enough creators that like, this is going to sound bad, uh, uh, that we don't have, we have too many creators and not enough cards to go around for preview seasons and things like that. Yeah. It's because I would love to have that many people engaging with this, creating their own communities and having fun with the game that like, there's almost too much and we have to find new ways to engage with people. Uh, and I hope that is a problem in the future for us because I've mm -hmm. really loved the people that we worked so far, and I just can't wait to see who else pops up in the next. As long years. as we still get one, yeah, of course, of course, of yeah. course. Anyway. Uh, moving, moving on, moving mm -hmm. on. Uh, you ready for some rapid fire questions? Oh, I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll start with the uh, the typical one: space units or ground units? Oh, space units. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I love a good spaceship, and I think they are undervalued. And if you can make a good deck that uh, utilizes them well, you can mow over some of the people that are only going on the ground. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anything with cunning, put that Millennium Falcon in there. Oh yeah, Millennium Falcon, so good. Just top yeah. tier card. <laughs> cunning Sabine. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, who are the better cooks, Wookies or Ewoks? Oh man, I think I'd go with Ewoks. I feel like they, you know, they good celebration meals and stuff like that. They they got a lot going on over there. I think. They did try to cook the main characters. Yeah, but that's like a side point, you know. <laughs> it might be delicious. Who yeah, knows? they know better than I do. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, they are the only ones shown to be cooking. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Outside of other cases, which I don't know if we can even. Anyway, what non showcase card were you most Ooh. excited to pull from a pack? Non showcase. I think it was a foil hyperspace cunning. 
was oh, it was like wow, it was nice. my favorite card going into the set because I was a big fan of running uh, Mono Cunning, and so I just really love that card because of I mean who doesn't like to exhaust two things and bounce something back to hand? So I'm like yeah, yeah. perfect card, and then getting the top tier rarity of version of it, I was like yep, this is going in the binder, it'll never come out again. <laughs> nice, all right. In a, in a bounty hunter battle royale. Who would take the crown? And we're gonna we're actually gonna remove all the Mandalorians because that's the obvious pick. Django, oh, Boba, uh, you know, Din Djarin. Like they're you know they're they're the the top, right? But out of the other bounty hunters, who would take it? Oh gosh, I feel like Ara Singh would be pretty, oh. pretty uh, you know capable right. in that competition. Yeah. Part of me wants to say like Dangar, but I just don't think he has it in him. I, <laughs> I don't think he does, unfortunately. <laughs> what set one deck did you play last, and how did it go? Uh, I played. On stream, uh, Grand Inquisitor with the security complex. Mm -hmm. uh, played it against Kevin Van Sloan's uh, Green Thrawn deck. And mm -hmm. it went very well. Uh, I, I thought he might uh, control me a little too much, but luckily I kept some units on board. And Fifth Brother swinging for five a couple of different turns feels pretty nice. That's a third yeah. of the health gone. <laughs> I like security complex too. It's one of those, I mean, 25 health base is risky, risky, but that shield can be crucial sometimes. Believe it or not, it's the only deck that I run at all with a 25 health base. Really? Yep. Uh, all the other ones, I go thirty. I, I'm I'm kind of just scared. I think is the bigger thing is like I don't want to lose by five health. That might be tough. <laughs> all right, what show are you watching lately? Uh, I just finished up uh, Delicious in Dungeon, um, hmm. the anime, and then I also finished up uh, Tokyo Vice recently too. Okay, yeah, cool. enjoyed them both. They're both for very different reasons, but uh, the others were kind of like my sit down at the end of the day shows. I haven't on. seen the first one. Seen the second one. It yeah, what'd you think? It was good. good. I liked it. Yeah. yeah, second season was great. Uh, who is the hardest leader to play correctly in set one, in your opinion? Hmm. Correctly? Uh, mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, there's two of them, and it's for reasons that I think are more of a mental hurdle than a like mm -hmm. mechanical hurdle, too. Uh, I think Emperor Palpatine, okay. for the fact that it's so hard to want to defeat your own units. You're like, I played this guy, and he's got some use, but maybe doing that one ping damage and drawing yeah. a card might be better in the in the future, and I think that's a big thing. And also just being willing to take your lumps in the first half of the game and get to about 20 damage on base, and that's a dangerous place to be. And mm -hmm. then turn it around and kick it into second gear in the second half of the game. It's easy to get rid of a super laser tech, but yeah. everything else is tough. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, you're like, oh really man, this one or two cost. You're like, he's yeah. kind of could do some damage, but it doesn't matter as long as you get to that Avenger coming out and drop just nine. Just gotta get to late game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then Han Solo, obviously, just yeah. from Knowing when to hold on to that card and when to ramp up again, is, is it's a tough decision. I really enjoy that. All right. All right. Final question. Who's the best player at Fantasy Flight? Who's oh, the I, best Star Wars level player? <laughs> I'm so sorry to the rest of the designers, but I feel like they'd all be on the same page that I would say uh, my, my coach, uh, Jeremy Zwern, is oh, okay. the top tier uh, player. I know that some people would argue Danny and some other members of the team, mm -hmm. uh, but I think Jeremy, like, I, I play him all the time and it's it's... I learn something new every single time. And I also have him look at my decks and tell me how bad they are to make sure before I show up to events, am I going to embarrass myself? And so, yeah, Jeremy. For the sure. guy's on another level, for sure. Oh, yeah. my gosh, yeah. It's, it, anytime, if you get a chance to play him, it just, you should, because even when you lose, which you will, uh, you will learn so much more than almost any other game. Because he also chats you through like some of the things afterwards, which is really great. He's, he, he taught me how to play Destiny uh, about a month ago, um, but he, and he still beat me. He didn't, uh, didn't have the courtesy to let me win in my first game. Like, <laughs> that is the one thing. It's hardcore. Yeah, yeah. some say. people say, oh, let, the, <laughs> let them win on their first game and then beat them in the second game. No, yeah. no, you will not <laughs> win your first game. Had a good time anyway. But, good, uh, it's a great game. Speaking of good times, thanks for joining us. Yeah. yeah, Xander Tabler, community manager, specialist for Star Wars Unlimited. Thanks for sitting down. Thanks for having me. 